tonight, tonight on Season Pass. District championships, postseason dreams, and seasons coming to an end. It was a wild week on the high school hardwood as girls basketball wrapped up the regular season. It was also a packed week for Angelo State Athletics. Baseball, softball, and basketball were all in action. And we have highlights from Foster Field and Meyer Field coming right up. It's a show that recaps it all. Buckle up. Season pass starts right now. Season Pass, sponsored by Kelly Grimsley Kia. Hello and welcome everyone to Season Pass, your one-stop shop for everything Concho Valley Sports. I'm your host, Ryan Reynolds. I say one-stop shop, but we have a ton of stops tonight. We recap the week on the high school hardwood. It was the final week of the regular season for the girls as the boys continued district action. We also have a handful of action from Angelo State Athletics. We have highlights from 18 games total in tonight's show. It's going to be a good one. So let's get started with Tuesday night's action on the high school basketball court. It seems like any time that Cristobal and El Dorado are playing each other, you can count on the stakes being high. The rivalry has become one of the most entertaining in the Concho Valley. And Tuesday night, the two met not only for bragging rights, but with a district title on the line. El Dorado beat Cristobal earlier this season at home. This time, they'd have to do it in Cougar country after a close first half third quarter now. Callie Montalvo drives, dishes it to Allison Vaughn, nails the jumper. Cristobal creating some distance later in the quarter. Mitzi Fernandez fights off the trap. Cootie Metter takes it to the basket. Lady Eagles down by 12. Next El Dorado possession. Montalvo and Vaughn with the trap. Vaughn comes away with the steal. She coasts in for the easy bucket. Cristobal led 35-17 at the end of the third. And then in the fourth, Lady Cougars pulling away now. More defense from Vaughn. Rips the ball away, then gives it to Gracie Jones. They held El Dorado to just two points in the final quarter and are your district 7-2A champs. Final score in Cristobal, 48-19. Staying in a 7-2A, the Miles Lady Bulldogs needed to beat Ozona Tuesday and have winners lose to clinch the district's final playoff spot. Fourth quarter, Miles leading off a Skyler Brooks missed free throw. Reagan Smithwick gets the rebound and the putback. She lays it in. Miles led the entire second half. Smithwick here misses the three, but Alexa Schwartner is there for the cleanup and a putback again. Ozona battled to the final buzzer. Shelby Galindo nails the three-point shot, but it was too little too late. Miles gets the win over the Lady Lions, 59 to 41. When Very Best in Blackwell met earlier this season, the Lady Falcons dominated, hitting seven threes in the first half alone. Since then, the Lady Hornets haven't lost a game and had a chance for revenge Tuesday with the district title up for grabs. Very Best, Blackwell round two, winner takes home a gold ball. Closing seconds of the first, Aaliyah Harrison over to the freshman, Callie Briley. She drills it to end the quarter. That gives the Lady Falcons an 8-7 lead. Briley led Very Best with 15 points. Second quarter, Blackwell up one. Make that a four-point lead. Tori Campos nails the three. The Lady Hornets led by four at the break. Blackwell took control in the third. Final seconds, Jaden Feichens beats the buzzer. And look at this reaction. Just turns around and hugs her teammate. What a moment. They just have to hold on for eight more minutes. And that gold ball is theirs. And they go to the security blanket to close it out. Emily Sanderson was a problem for very best all night. She scored a game-high 16 points. Blackwell takes it. 47-38, to 38, the Lady Hornets are District 11-1A champions. They'll have a bye in the first round of the playoffs. Here's head coach Bud Halfman on the win. They expect success here. And for us to, you know, the football boys did an awesome job this year and their best year ever. And now for us to have our best year ever in the same year, uh, when you have that kind of community support, it just it makes you believe you can do it. For us to just come back and play well after as, as bad as it was in very best, that says a lot about our group and what we can overcome. And, you know, finishing an undefeated home season is pretty special. That was a goal of ours. And uh, just, just super proud of the kids. Another team fighting for a district title Tuesday night was the Central Lady Cats. They needed to beat 12th ranked LD Bell, and they fell 50 to 26. It's okay, though. The Lady Cats finished second in District 36A and will face North Crowley in the by district round at 6 30 p.m. Tuesday in Brownwood. 
It's not quite the end of the line for boys' high school hoops, but it's getting close. There were only three games left entering Tuesday in District 4-3A. TLCA and Brady met for the second time this season. The Bulldogs getting the best of the Eagles the first time, and now both needing wins for different reasons. The Eagles are just a game back of wall for first place. Brady hoping to hold on to the fourth and final playoff spot first quarter. Javon Everett, he's been doing that all season long with the acrobatic finish. TLCA up two now. Bulldogs trying to break the TLCA press. Gonzalo Morales gets the bucket with contact. Game is tied later in the quarter. Bulldogs giving Everett plenty of space, and he makes them pay with the three. You can't give a guy like that that much space. And then a few possessions later, Everett beating his man, splitting the traffic for the lay, and he's just so fun to watch. Night in and night out into the quarter. Everett drives, finds Seth Levesque in the corner. TLCA led by five at the end of the first. Would go on to get the big win at home, 58-39. to Lakeview Chiefs and the Snyder Tigers, two of the three teams in 5-4A battling for the last two playoff spots. Fourth quarter, Lakeview trailing, trying to spark a comeback. Santos Rangel hits the corner three to cut into the lead, The Snyder would put the clamps on. Samingo goes inside to Zach Miller for the easy lay-in. Look at that flashy bounce pass, threading the needle for the bucket, and again from the other side. Samingo to Miller for the lay-in right here, easy as it gets. And then Johnny Espinosa got one final layup at the buzzer. Lakeview falls to Snyder, 43-24. to A lot of great action on Tuesday, but what's even better? How about some games with the season on the line? Coming up on Season Pass, we recap Friday night's action around the area. We have highlights from two play-in games. You don't want to miss it. Stick around. Selfie? Yeah. Uh-oh. What? I think I forgot to lock my Buick. Got it. <gasps> At least your Buick's locked. At the heart of every Buick Encore is you. Pay no interest for 72 months on most 2019 Buick Encore models. Or get 4,000 purchase allowance plus an additional 750 purchase allowance for current eligible GM owners. Visit Mitchell Buick GMC in San Angelo. KLST, honoring black history with this moment in hidden history. It's a unique culture that stretches from the shores of Africa to the Carolinas. The Gula Geechee people are sharing their history with visitors near and far at the Geechee Kunda Cultural Arts Center in Riceboro, Georgia. This moment in hidden history is sponsored by San Angelo ISD, creating lifelong learners who are capable, productive, and contributing citizens. Just have to start. Auto save your way there with Chase. Chase, make more of what's yours. We switched. We switched. I switched to Chevy for my family. I switched for more room. <laughs> we switched. Why do we switch? For adventure. For this. See why people are switching to Chevy. I'm never switching back. Get $3,000 cash allowance on all Trax models. Plus, current competitive owners get an additional $750 cash allowance. Chevy drives Texas. Find new roads. Welcome back to Season Pass. Tuesday night was technically the final day of the girls' high school basketball season, but you can never overlook a tie in the final district standings. That's what happened with winners in Miles in 7-2A, and they played Friday night for the district's final playoff spot. The stage is set. A neutral site game out in Blackwell. Both teams came out firing specifically. Miles, Reagan, Smithwick. First quarter here. Smithwick drills the open jumper off the nice one-handed assist from Skylar Brooks, and Smithwick showing off her post moves up and under off off the glass, a beautiful sequence from her. And then here, putting in the work in the paint. Brooks shot is off the mark. Smithwick grabs the board and the putback. She had 10 of the Lady Bulldogs, 12 points in the quarter. Final seconds of the half. Miles up three. Jezebel Gonzalez throws up a prayer, misses. But Grace, Gracie, Gracie Ila Reyes is there to beat the buzzer. Miles took a one-point lead into the half. They came out in the second half and locked up the final playoff spot. They win 57-49. They'll take on Haskell in the by-district round tomorrow in Colorado City. 
Another play in game in District 4 3A between Reagan County and Grape Creek out in Mertzen. Second quarter, Grape Creek down one. Lady Eagles swing it around to the corner for Daphne Vigil. She drills the three. A two point lead for Grape Creek, closing seconds of the half. Tegan Rivers drills the three. The Lady Eagles take a lead into the break. Just 16 minutes left. Third quarter now, Lady Eagles still up. Rivers drives and hits the pull up jumper to extend the lead to four. Which brings us to the closing seconds of the third. Lady Eagles go down low to Brianna Morris for the lay-in. They keep the lead the rest of the way. Lady Eagles win 39-27. They'll play Crane in the by-district round. What about the guys? Two games remained in the regular season Friday, and 12-1A Eden and Menard met up to basically determine who would win the district title. The Bulldogs could claim the title outright with the win. Menard would force a tiebreaker with the win and another on Tuesday. Eden dominated this one early on, up by 11. Near the end of the first, Jeremy Burney knocks down the three at the buzzer. The bench goes wild, 20-6 lead. For Eden, something special in the air. Menard trying to play catch up in the second quarter. Check out that no look pass by Xavier Rosas. Out to Jordan McSherry. He drills that corner three. McSherry led Menard with 10 points. Bulldogs giving their foot on the gas in the third. Julian Gamboa passes it to Hunter Rogers. Goes around his guy for the lay in. He finished with 21 on the night. Put the Bulldogs up by 30. And Eden wins 70 to 37 over Menard to claim the district 12 1A title outright. Out to Sterling City for District 11 1A. Second place Sterling City battling third place very best. First quarter, Chance Rubel finds Joshua Bolin in the paint for the bucket and the foul. Only four Falcons scored in this one. Sterling City led by five at the half. We pick it up in the third, and the Eagles came out soaring. They swing it around to Michael McGuire for the three. That puts Sterling City up 26 to 19. It would lead by nine, entering the fourth. Very best, needing to make adjustments, but this possession pretty much puts the nail in the coffin. Damian Calderon misses the jumper, but Quentin McMillan is there for the cleanup and one. He scored a game high nine points. He's fired up, and he should be. Sterling City defeats very best 42 to 28. The Eagles secure their first 20 win season since 2007 and finish second place in district. Playoffs for girls basketball starts this week. You know, we'll have the highlights next on Season Pass. We jump to the collegiate level with Angelo State. Highlights from baseball, softball, and basketball coming right up. Hey, I just wanted to let everybody know about Truck Mop, the Jim Bass Cars and Trucks. Right now, get a brand new 2019 Ford Ranger Lariat Crew Cab 4x4 and get eight grand off MSRP. Jim Bass Cars and Trucks, Houston Heart and Arden Road, or 24-7 at BassBots.com. Hey, buddy, just FYI, you were just a little off-key there. Hi, I'm Mike. MGB wants to be your MVP, most valuable payer. Bring your gold, silver, and diamonds to MGB, and you'll say... I sold gold, and I like Mike. On Avenue Inn by Angelo State. Hi, I'm Darren Black with my son Chris Black and my grandkids Maverick and Presley. I'd like to say thank you for allowing Black Plumbing to be a part of your family for the past 25 years. And we look forward to serving you for the next 25 years. Or in the next 50 years. On behalf of the best employees in Texas, we'd like to thank you for making Black Plumbing your professional choice for the past 25 years. The pros who know are ready to go. Call on Black Plumbing. Help is on the way. Thank you. Well, hello, y'all. I'm Jay Johnson, pastor of the San Angelo Cowboy Church, and we want to invite y'all to come join us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. We have Cow Kids Church, a nursery, interpreter for the deaf. So come see us Sunday morning at 10 a.m. See you there. The most capable Sierra lineup ever. Get 0% financing for 72 months on 2020 Sierra 1500 models. Plus get 500 purchase allowance when you finance through GM Financial. Or get 7,000 purchase allowance on the Sierra Texas Edition. Welcome back to Season Pass. Before we recap last week's action on the diamond, a couple of Angelo State athletes were in the Lone Star Conference spotlight. 
when the weekly awards were announced last Monday. Starting with ASU baseball, Benjamin Elder was named the pitcher of the week for the Lone Star Conference. Elder struck out 12 and in six innings pitched against Oklahoma Christian. He held the Eagles' batting average to just a .95. Against him and just gave up two hits and no walks as part of the Rams' three game sweep at Oklahoma Christian. And then Megan Hill, she was also named LSE Pitcher of the Week. Hill earned her first collegiate no hitter, striking out 11 and walking just one in the Bells' 2 0 win over Malloy College. She followed that up by tossing a one hitter against Florida Tech. She finished the week with two complete games, just one hit, one walk, and 15 strikeouts. Which brings us to last week's action. The Rams are back in town Friday afternoon. They open their four game homestand against Cameron out at Foster Field. Undefeated so far, 11th ranked team in the country, scoreless in the bottom of the first. Josh Elvier rips a towering fly ball into center, a deep home run, 1 to 0 Rams. He's a Golden Spikes nominee. Pitching has been great. Defense has helped. Rams third baseman Jordan Williams flashes the leather in the hot corner and throws it just in time for the out. What a play! By him. And how about some more defense? Trent Baker can't make the play on the grounder, but Nick Novak ranges to his left to make the play. More gold glove defense from the Rams. And then they broke out the bats from there. With two on, Parker Bramlett splits the game in, splits it right into right center. Two Rams come home. Angelo State leads 7 to 0 in the third. Angelo State dominates Cameron Friday afternoon. They pick the win in game one, 16 to 2. Game two against Cameron, the first of a doubleheader at Foster Field yesterday. Bottom of the first, runner on third with one out for Brad Mathewitz. He lifts this one into deep center field. It's caught, but he's going to get the job done. Parker Bramlett strolls in to score. That ties things up at one. But the Aggies respond quickly in the top half of the second. Jace Klim licking his chops at the first pitch he sees from Ben Elder and sends it over the left field fence. A solo shot for him puts Cameron ahead two to one. But if you know this Rams lineup, they're a force to be reckoned with. Bottom second, we've seen this before from Aaron Walters. A towering shot to center field. A solo bomb. His team leading fourth of the season, and we're all tied again a couple batters later. Bramlett pooches one to center. It falls for an RBI single. Jordan Williams touches home. That makes it 5-2 to two Rams. ASU wins 11-6. to six. Walters finished 2-3 for three with four RBIs. The night cap, no different. The Rams picking up its ninth win of the season, 10 to 4 over the Aggies. Josh Elvier with a three home run performance. He finished three for three with five RBIs. Those three homers tying a single game record for Angelo State. Series finale time. The Rams looking to break out the brooms against Cameron, leading 4 to 1 in the bottom of the second. Cameron pitcher throws back to second to try and pick off Thomas Kane. It's overthrown to center field. Kane booking it. And he slides in safely for the run. He's fired up about it, and who wouldn't be? He high fives Brad Mathewitz. ASU leads five to one. The Rams really dug into Cameron in the third, leading five to three. Kane singles to center, brings home Riley Peterson and Aaron Walters. A seven-three lead now for ASU, and they weren't done just yet. Parker Bramlett. We've heard that name several times already. Knocks this one to right field. Nick Novat and Kane score easily. Bramlett with a stand-up triple. He leads the conference in triples. 9-3 ASU leads. The Rams scored nine runs in the third and cruised to a 23-8 win over Cameron in seven innings. Kane went two for three with five RBIs. ASU improves to 10-0. Much like the Rams, the Bells softball team has hit an early stride to start the season. The Bells hosted the George and Ola McCorkle Challenge last week with the chance to show fans at Meyer Field what all the buzz is about. First game for the Bells at the George and Ola McCorkle Challenge, taking on Texas A&M International Genesis. Armandera's on the mound for ASU, bottom of the first. Heather Ruiz slaps one into left field. Runner from third comes home to score. International strikes first, but that lead wouldn't last long. Top of the second, bases juice for Courtney Barnhill. She lifts that one out to center. Jade Strother comes home. That gives Angelo State a 2-1 lead. And then a couple batters later, Paxton Shearer crushes one to left and over the wall for a two-run shot. The Bells continuing to build that lead. Five to one after that homer. End up, they end up forcing a run rule in the fifth. They win nine to one. Saturday action at the Georgia and Ola McCorkle Challenge. ASU facing Washita Baptist. The Tigers crack the scoreboard in the top of the third. Macy Wilson drops this one to shallow center scoring Callie Jordan. Bells still hold an early 4-1 lead though. But now with runners on the corners, Toby Findlay strikes out swinging, but she would go to first on the pass ball. 
Kendall Moyer scores from third. Tigers trail by just two runs, but ASU, they start to create some separation in the fifth inning. It's Hattie Shope. She takes that pitch for a ride to right. Travis Scott waves home. Jade Strother, and she slides in safely for the RBI double. Five to two lead for Angelo State. They would go on to beat the Tigers six to two. The Bells then battling New Mexico Highlands, Angelo State's fourth game in the last two days. Bottom of the first runners on the corners. Freshman Madison Fernandez hits a fly ball to right center. It's caught, but deep enough to score Barnhill. 1 to 0. Bells hold the early lead over Highlands. Bottom of the second now. And that's when things start to get ugly. Barnhill now up with no outs and the base is juiced. She clears him with a grand slam to right center. It's now 6 to 0. Bells. And there's a whole lot more where that came from, folks. The very next batter, Paxton Sure, she goes yard. The Bells hit back to back jacks. They put up seven runs in the second inning as the Bells run rule Highlands 10 to 0 in five innings. Megan Hill gets the win, giving up just one hit. Next on Season Pass, we stay on the softball diamond as the Bells wrap up action at the George and Ola McCorkle Challenge. We also head indoors to the hardwood for Angelo State basketball. A lot more action when we return. Nobody beats the noddle but still our incredible prizes put you behind the wheel. Nobody. Nope. Nobody. Not a chance. Well, did you get the message? We're determined to get you the best prize possible. Like this. A new 2020 Ram 1500 Crew Cab ST is only $28,999 or $373 a month. Nobody beats a noddle but still. Let me guess, you've been mattress shopping online. Yeah. Does this feel soft to you? You need easy choice. Easy choice? Yeah, that sounds easy. It is. Can we try it? You are. Easy. Choice. Can we take it home? Yeah, but we came here on these. We deliver. Awesome. awesome. Find your easy choice. The best price, comfort, quality, and setup. It's easy. <laughs> This is Steven. Pretty sporty car there, Steven. This is my dad's new Camry. It's got a V6 engine, cool safety features, panoramic moonroof, a super roomy back seat. You're right about the back seat, Steven. Roomy. Get carried away by the sporty new Toyota Camry. Right now, get $1,500 customer cash, or qualified lessees can lease a new 2020 Camry LE for only $249 a month. Hurry in today. Toyota, let's go places. Welcome back to Season Pass. Six games in three days is no joke for any athlete and, well, any sport, really. The Angelo State Bells accomplished that feat today when the team wrapped up action at the George and Ola McCorkle Challenge. So let's go ahead and roll those highlights. Welcome back to Meyer Field, starting with international no hits for the Bells until the bottom of the third, and they break through in a huge way. Courtney Barnhill cranks this one over the center field fence, her second homer of the season. She had 12 bombs last year. That puts Angelo State up one to zero, and the hits start to string together. Very next inning, Karina Rocha leads it off, and she swings at the second pitch she sees, and it's out of there. Hitting is contagious, ladies and gentlemen. We see it Right here, Rocha's second of the year gives the Bells a two-run lead. A couple batters later, Keely Grace uh, Garcia lofts one down the first base line. The fielder misplays it, which brings in another run. ASU with a 3-0 lead in the fourth. They go on to win it, 6-1 to the final score. The final game of the McCorkle Challenge features Tarleton State and Angelo State. No score in the bottom of the fourth. ASU trying to change that. Hattie Shope hits it to shallow right. Megan Gordon tries to beat the tag. Can she do it at home plate? She is called out, so the game remains scoreless. But they finally break through. Avery Ziegler draws ball forward with the bases loaded. Hattie Shope will stroll home. ASU finally getting on the board with a one-run lead. But why stop there? Jade Strother 
She's going to bounce this ball to the third baseman. She can't get a hold of it. So Keeley Gar Garcia will score. Burns also comes home. 3-0 to zero lead for ASU as the Bells knock off number 21, Tarleton State. ASU takes it 3-2. to two. Both ASU basketball teams taking on Oklahoma Christian Thursday night. Fourth quarter game tied. Asia Davis with the three ball, but Oklahoma Christian makes it interesting. Megan Shelton drills a three of her own. This one was back and forth till the very end after ASU free throws. Down four, last shot for the Eagles. It is off the mark. The Bells avoid their third loss in a row, winning 90 to 84. The Rams then played right after. They took center stage down two under a minute to play. Paul Williams sends it into overtime off this drive, scoops it up and in, an athletic play from him, and then an OT, they started to pull away Williams again, this time showing off his range, a deep three, no upset Thursday, Rams win 71-61. to The Bells then continued their road trip yesterday against Arkansas Fort Smith, looking to build on that win over Oklahoma Christian, and they get the job done in a close one, 73-72, D. Moore led the way for ASU with 19 points, the Bells have now won two in a row, they have a date with Texas A&M Kingsville next Thursday. So the, we the Bells win by one, and the Rams, they lose by one. Angelo State taking the court right after the women. They lose a tight one, 83-82. Colin Turner led the Rams with 21 points. Andre C. Bargwin also added a double-double, but it was Fort Smith's Brian Halems who stole the show. Look at that stat line, 45 points and seven rebounds from him. The Lions only led for seven minutes in this one, and they pick up the win. Angelo State will also battle Texas A&M Kingsville on Thursday. Tip off from the Janelle Center. Except for 7:30. The countdown to the Lone Star Conference tournament is on just 16 more days. The regional rankings for basketball will release on Wednesday. But hey, don't go anywhere. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. Next on Season Pass, we reveal our Player of the Week. We'll be right. Oh, quarter pound double cheeseburger. Look at that, man. That looks juicy. What about this crispy tender sandwich? I know. Oh, man, we both got tots all for $2.99. This is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Gotta love the Car Hop Classic. <laughs> Introducing the most capable Sierra lineup ever. Get 0% financing for 72 months on 2020 Sierra 1500 models. Plus get 500 purchase allowance when you finance through GM Financial. Or get 7,000 purchase allowance on the Sierra Texas Edition. Sonic just introduced tachos. Look at that cheese sauce. Bacon too, so crispy. And Baja Blend. Love those spicy jalapenos. Tachos. It's like I'm saying nachos, but I'm not. It's not that much like you're saying nachos. Hey everyone, welcome back to Season Pass. It's time now to crown a new player of the week. We talked about them earlier, but the Rams are hot to start 2020. And the student athlete played a huge role in Angelo State's sweep of Cameron. Put your hands together for junior infielder Parker Bramlett. In the four-game series against Cameron, Bramlett batted a 6-11 with 11 hits, 5 going for extra bases, drove in 10 runs and scored 8. Bramlett took over the leadoff spot for the Rams this season. And through 10 games, his production is through the roof. He ranks first in the Lone Star Conference and runs batted in, hits, triples, and ranks third in batting average for his full stats. Visit ContraValleyHomePage.com. Parker Bramlett, your Player of the Week. Player of the Week is sponsored by Southwest Pools and Spas. That pretty much wraps up this episode of Season Pass. You can check out all of our content on ConchoValleyHomePage.com. You can also download the Concho Valley Homepage app to take all of our content on the go, even if you want to rewatch this exact show. Head over to ConchoValleyHomePage.com. My name is Ryan Reynolds. You can follow us on Twitter at KLSC Sports. You can follow me on Twitter at at RPR Talks. Go ahead and tweet at me. We can start a conversation. We can talk about Angelo State or high school. It doesn't matter. Local sports, area sports, national sports. We'll be right back here.